can definitely say it's trending, but unlike bell bottoms, this one's not going to go out of style. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's something, it can't go out of style. And yeah, that's, when, yeah. Once you get a little taste of it, I mean, you, know, you, you can't a, actually, you know, you, you, you can't unsee. Yeah, you can't <laughs> yeah. unsee this stuff. And, and speaking of seeing, you know, you talked a little bit about activating the third eye. And, I, you know, curious because it sounds like you have had so many interesting uh, experiences, uh, you know, personally in your own development what has been your experience with activation of the third eye and what kind of things if someone goes down this path of uh you know cleaning their body and and working on activating their chakras and you talked a little bit about it but maybe you could elaborate elaborate a little bit more on the activation of the third eye and, and what someone can expect to uh be revealed for sure well you know definitely i've uh fully blown open my third eye and um and it's good that it actually like most orifices in the body it, it kind of closes itself so you know it's you know just like all the orifices of the body they generally will close themselves if they're not worked on so um what happens is, is when you open the third eye it depends on if you're looking directly into the reality or if you're looking within because obviously okay. many of the experiences like personally my experiences first came through breathing um but though, but then later on, I actually started. Uh, I had this thing with what we just call diamond tree, and you know, that's just for lack of other terms. But it's really DMT, and we'll just say that once. And I, you know, I kind of <laughs> went through a process where I went in about ninety times. Oh wow! And and what that allowed me to do is it allowed me to, especially with having all this knowledge and information beforehand, begin to really discover what was actually going on in the reality and what these chakras really do. And with the third eye, what it does is it pretty much lays a HUD, if you may, a heads up display over the reality. It looks like somewhat of a grid or a net. And what happens with the eyes are, is it lays over this concave uh, triangle, which is basically a, a triangle without the, the straight lines. It's like curved lines, but infinite amounts of them. And this allows you to actually see the spaces within spaces. That's the easiest way to explain it. And this allows you to be able to perceive things that others cannot. Like you can actually see things in the fabric of the reality. And those things range from signatures, meaning things that have actually been done in that particular space. Um, the real identity of many of the objects that are around us. Even if you think that they're inorganic, such as plastic, metal, your TV, a tripod, etc., because right. all of these uh, elements, all these things are actually made up of elements, and those elements are, are rather sentient. And, um, wow. and then also what it allows you to do is transcend space-time, because what happens is it's like uh, you have this beam, and I'm just choosing the right words here, you have this beam that pierces everything to a point where it can't lie to you. So it can't actually cloak itself in, t in the same garb that things in this normal reality will clothe itself in to disguise itself, if you may. Uh, this happens with people. This happens with inanimate objects. And so when you look at it, you pierce it. And then that right. reveals to you what it really is. It's, it's ge uh, geometric makeup. It's sound because generally the shock, the chakra is the third eye, you know, hopefully being one of the final chakras to activate in a person's process, your chakras actually collapse and it tends to like Russian dolls. Uh, so let's say if there's a chakra to hear and there's a chakra to see, when they collapse, you now hear see. Gotcha. And hear seeing allows you to see everything that sound is coming from. And then you see those you see those dimensions, if you may, like tubes. And when you travel down those tubes, you can get to the origin of that sound. And so it becomes, you know, it's a, it's a wild adventure. And, you know, obviously it needs to be uh, controlled to a certain aspect by self, not by anybody else, but by self, because you start to realize that you're wholly in control of manifestation. It's the same thing that you're doing in the dream that in most tenses, unless the dream is being programmed, the person is actually manifesting the entire dream, uh, but thinking because they're not either aware that they have that much creativity or that they even have the ability to do that, that they're actually experiencing something. So this is more of you take a step 
and then the actual step itself appears is what's going on in the dream so you have a thought but right before that thought there is the actual essence of it this is called the inception point because obviously right. coming into earth is a conception and then before you enter earth that's inception so all right. these inceptions are happening and sometimes, you know, if it's well for most people, if it's getting the best of you, you can actually think that, oh my goodness, I was in this dream, and and you were there, and you know, Michael Jackson was there, and but all that's <laughs> happening is is that the frontal lobe uh, and the cerebral cortex, in in all of this wet work, as I call it, is so. Uh, wow, I mean, it's amazing stuff. I mean, even the greatest and grandest machines that we've ever built can't even come close to it. You know, th this stuff is so. Um, mystical and amazing that it can actually create and project things that you wouldn't even believe that you have the ability to do and this is because all of this data if you may is located um well it has its biolocal so it's not actually somewhere but it's all in one mainframe that we call the hive and in the hive because we all have access to that through the geometry that in is incorporated within our bodies through the the chakras, the physical structure, the sounds that we make, etc. We can pull that data, if you may, in real time. And so it streams to us in every aspect. And so the more that you begin to get involved with it, the more potential it has. And it's actually from what we would perceive to be endless to what can really be generated from it and what can be experienced. So that's, you know, that's the third eye. <laughs> it's like, you know, you, you know, it's amazing. That's all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> that's, that's the limit of our thought boundary in our language. But yeah, yeah. That, that's what we're talking about is accessing the limitless. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things. And you talked about, you know, realizing you're creating basically how powerful of a creator you are and what yeah. I, I believe so few people realize is they you're such a powerful creator that you actually created this experience you just have amnesia to the inception of it right uh, For sure. and and once you start realizing that you're the one behind this story and you're literally the uh lead actor uh, and director in your own movie this is your own private universe in this yeah. moment i'm just talking to a reflection of self and and vice versa i'm just a uh prop in your movie and you're a prop in mine and really yeah. this is my own private reality once you start wrapping your brain around that one and then having experiences like you're talking about where you, you're really accessing you know um so much information beyond the the five senses it it really yeah. just is uh it's a whole different uh exp life experience and it's so yeah, it's so I mean, crazy the, to the, think <laughs> sorry go ahead no i was just saying the cup becomes uh half full then like you start realizing you know maybe this is just began more so than hey this is the end <laughs> and yeah, you realize exactly. there is no end <laughs> exactly. You'll never, the journey is the goal. No matter how far you make it, you'll never be, yeah. uh, reach your end. And thank goodness for that, uh, because, uh, eternity is a long time. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, I re we already proved a or while ago that time. people were more scared of that than they are of death. Because, you know, when yeah. you figure out that there is no end to this, that could become a little bit more startling than that, you know, there is an end. Because, you know, some people do want to get off and get back on again. And so, you know, this is somewhat hilarious. And that's why I call it, you know, it's somewhat trapped in perfection. We have to understand exactly how vast our consciousness is and how capable it is of doing different things. It's basically perfect. So in that tense, it's like it's easier than for a person to think of concepts like death and think that they're real, because what's behind all of that is actually perfection conducting all of it. And it's just like what you're saying. It's like, you know, when you realize everything is geocentric to you, regardless, like you, I'll be orbiting you. I'll, you see everything outside of your own eyes. I'm not actually behind your eyes and, and, and they're in there with you per se in this reality. So in, in, in that tense, you're the central character. And that's why, you know, we really worked uh, most in the beginning to eliminate a lot of the external, uh, Idolons, if you may, the ideas of these vast consciousness, such as God, uh, that were actually outside of the person, more so than realizing right. the true nature to all of this and to that our, our power is within and our connection with everything is within. 
And so, yeah, you know, th this is like preaching to the choir and then to talking that kind of stuff. So, you know, we can kind of politely go on to another topic, but <laughs> right, that's, right. What, that's what it really is. <laughs> there, there is a list of topics. Like I said, yeah, I, there's so many things that I, it's, it's almost one of those things with you. It's like, okay, I've got a list of all kinds of exciting things. Where do, which one do I touch on? Because there well, is so much. I'm surprised that we've gotten so much out in one hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So far, so good. So, so we'll go a little bit further and then maybe what we'll, we can do is look at, you know, uh, doing a, a, you know, second version, we'll uh, if you're up for it, because, yeah, uh, I think, you know me, I'm, I think, I'm in it. I'm in this. Good. I love it. I love it. Um, so speaking of the, you know, being sort of the, the center of your own universe, as we've mm -hmm. just touched on, it, is the body really a universe in itself? Is the, the microcosm and macrocosm, are they all just reflections of the same thing? And what, what proof have you found in your, uh, you know, journey to, uh, Kind of, because I, I assume I know your answer is, is yes. So, what proof do, do you have of this? How have you been shown this to be the case? Well, beyond the host, you know, because I always have to mention that because until a person realizes that they are Godhead, then their reality is actually hosted. Uh, just like, you know, like websites, they're hosted by something else. And the easier way to explain that is, is that, you know, if, if you look at computers, um, when you have hard drives, you can have a, ma you'll have a master drive. And then you'll have a slave drive and there's absolutely nothing different between the master and the slave except for how it's hooked up and so this is kind of the, the part of what we're experiencing in the reality until we become adept or adults which those words kind of work together then we will need something to kind of host this experience for us until we're ready to take the reins and pull the thing off our of autopilot and do our thing and so what I found is, is that the, the, the sheer proof that our body is in fact a universe actually leads into a lot of ancient knowledge, but uh, I'll make it uh, as current as possible. And that's really the organs, because if you notice that the word organ does in fact mean something that plays sound. And anyone who's mm -hmm. ever studied chakras knows that the chakras actually tie into the organs. That's why there's not just seven chakras. There's actually uh, quite a few different chakras in the body, but there's some primaries. And so it's right. the same thing with the universe that there's infinite amounts of planets out there. But according to where we are, there are some primary planetary systems that uh, have influence, if you may, over right. us. And then the ancient story goes is that uh, these organs actually tied into actual vibrations that could do little, uh, little, little of anything other than be what they were. So they decided to come into an agreement with one another. And that created what we know as the physical body and this immediate universe, which is all connected. So the actual physical body in man is a microcosm and woman is a microcosmic version of the cosmos with the organs playing as the planetary systems the chakras and their movements playing as the the or the orbits right. the sounds from the vibration playing as the resonation that comes off of the star systems that give them light and make them so unique and then all that being in one body creating this word that we call universe which actually when you break it down means united which is uni but in conflict which is verse so, in fact, the body is constantly in conflict because, you know, if you drink a Coca-Cola, your taste buds and your brain is now at war with your liver because surely the liver and the stomach is not going to like the experience that it's about to have. But each part of the body is actually in a war for dominance. So this is known as the battlefield of Arunja, and it tends to where you have to become the king of kings, lord of lords, or god, or whatever you want to call it, the master of your own universe. And, you know, there's, there's numerous connections, like the arms have a tendency to correspond with Mars. And sure enough, arms is an anagram for the word Mars. And obviously Mars is about war. It's also proper protection and courage. But anytime you go into a fight, you generally are fighting with your hands. Your right. torso is Taurus. And that torsion field is not only the, the geometric aspect of the, of the creation itself, but also in the planetary system of the Taurus and the seven stars of the Pleiades, etc., is known to be the birth and inception point of many of the beings that actually live here. 
And so it goes on and on and on as you study the astronomy, not so much as just astrology, even though that definitely connects. But when you say astronomy, people, oh, you know, maybe it's scientific. So the astronomy behind uh, how the cosmos and the immediate universe is set up is actually a blueprint, even if you just lay it out the proper way of the body or what's known as the cadmium in a certain tense, because the body has a masculine and a feminine side, even if you're primarily masculine or primarily feminine, meaning you incarnated as a male or a female, you still do have a dual aspect to your consciousness. That is what we would say is positive and negative or masculine and feminine. However, the wobble, which is, you know, what most are working to repair, to actually come into balance. So that way they right. become even, even, or uh, what do they call it? Even handed if you may, but that 23.5, I believe, or 26, whatever degree wobble on the planet is actually synonymous, synonymous with why uh, some are more partial to a certain hemisphere of their body and consciousness, etc. And when correcting that wobble, then you actually become, let's say, androgen in your consciousness to where you can actually birth something unique and begin to take on your aspect beyond the sun, which is actually a real place that the sun is more of a gate. And when you go through it, because it leads to the core, at least to galactic core, you come out the other side, you actually get into a space that we just know as the realm of the unbegotten. And this may be getting a little bit more into the depth, but the, the realm of the unbegotten is basically it transcends time. There's no time there. So it's where we all are now into we, unless we're doing the whole division and where we always will be. It's like where ma grandma goes when she dies, except right. for the, uh, the eidolons or the ideas of who grandma really is, which still remain here. And so we really have in front of us a glorious experience because we will be we will rejoin our family. And, and especially because and if people want to prove this, it's because 70 percent of the body is water anyway. And no matter what kind of sarcophagus or whatever they put you in, most of you is going to evaporate within the first month or 49 yeah. days of your experience after you living on Earth and is going to collect itself back with what it really is. So all that water, which is really sentient, I know many people who've had experiences with water is most of your family while all of those other elements are going to break themselves down also and rejoin themselves based on ionic bonds. So this is things that you can see under the microscope and things that more pertain to physics. And so, you know, it, it's a, it's a very uh, miraculous journey that we're actually on the, the death and the reincarnation processes is just another icing on the cake. This is like PlayStation nine or something, right. uh, but, but obviously it could become a bit much for when it's not perceived that way. And it can actually become more of a pin if it's not perceived in the proper way, meaning it could actually become what people feel like as a prison, uh, which is sometimes synonymous with the prism, which is, you know, when you shine that clear light into the prism, it becomes seven colors. And there's two other colors, white and black, which we don't need to elaborate on now. But basically, it becomes this experience of races. It becomes its experiences of zodiacs. It becomes the experiences of these dualities and these different aspects to where at times you can't even see how you would even connect uh, if you're black with white or if you're red with blue. But if you right. pull off of all of it for one moment and have the opportunity to see the, let's say, the Archimedean point, this is the point to where you can actually see everything. And then you would understand that, oh, wow, this is all one grand structure of the same thing. And if I wasn't so close to it, like having my hand and right onto the face and trying to read something on your palm, if I wasn't so close to it in the experience, gave myself a moment to pull back off of it, then I would realize that. And that's sometimes what the isolation does for many individuals that are on that spiritual quest. When they get a chance to pull out of the matrix and to shut everything down for a moment, then they start having the deeper realizations of what they really are and who they really are, et cetera. Wow. <laughs> so you, you talked about uh, the realm of the unbegotten and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, reincarnation you've touched on a little bit. What in, in your, um, from your perception, what happens to us after we die? Well, as a professional reincarnator, that's actually a term we, we coin. It means to be able to guide your ship. Uh, I think Dan Winters says, you know, it's a tornado that knows how to steer itself. Uh, what happens is, is that you go to the frequency that you correspond to.
because what happens is, is a person spends most of their life polarized, what choosing what they want and what they don't want until they basically become well, see, they start that way, and that's really what the zodiac sign is. See, we should work to be cosmoses, not zodiac signs. And that's why most people can be narrowed down to the aspects of their zodiac sign, especially for a person who really knows how to read zodiac. They say, well, what are you? And, you know, I'm, I'm a Libra. I was born on this day. And, you know, you give the whole synopsis, and then this person can start reading you like a book. And it's because that's the planetary influence. Those are the frequencies or the chakra, if you may, that you're primarily broadcasting so what happens is is that when you get into this next aspect of yourself so let's just conclude the question so what happens when you die you go to a diametric opposition see this word die means to split so this life that you previously used to live is now divided from you there's a hard wire in the consciousness that says okay i did that now i need to go and do something different and different means opposite to what you were doing before. This is diametric. So you literally go to opposite of what you were before. And that's like the other side of your zodiac sign. And then you come in through the reincarnation process again through that planetary system. That's the portal you take. It shapes, molds, and fashions you into that. And then you pop up here on Earth again, but with this different aspect and also you don't remember that you were actually here before. In most cases, sometimes there's deja vu. And it's because you pass through quite a few magnetic fields. And because the entire body, even where our memory is encased, which is not inside of our brain, is electromagnetic, this has the effect of like rubbing a credit card over a magnet. It just wipes off all the information. So um, a part of this training is is to become unmovable, which is begin to, is beginning to put things in your consciousness that are actually true, because division is falsehood. So anything that right. pertains to division won't sustain itself in a cosmic storm; it'll just blow away. And that's why the person doesn't have any real memories of all of these different individual and all this stuff that they thought that they were and all that, because none of that is true. Only truth can survive going through these kind of vortexes, et cetera. So for most people, again, this is a process that is conducted almost on autopilot. And this is why you see the symbol of recycling as the Megan star or the actual star of uh, David, as they call it, uh, which is you know not the real term. But that particular star, as you see it in the recycling uh, symbol, is because that is the process of a person going through reincarnation, which is recycling of the soul, through six, six is also synonymous with the number sex. When mm -hmm. two people are having sex, there's a friction. That friction creates light, a specific kind of light, though, because when two people are coming together, no light is more unique than that because each person has their own aspects. And then the reincarnation point, that becomes a reincarnation point for this soul that's coming back in through its transmigration. When it leaves the body, it will travel down what we call the ley lines because only spirits can travel in the spirits travel in a straight line. So they go down these ley lines, which are like in the forest. They're like the paths that are walked down most. So kind of automatically you go down those lines unless you're a professional reincarnator, which a professional reincarnator is going to be more aware of what's going on because you don't actually have to wait until quote unquote death to die. And that's why, um, some of the depths of say, you know, I die daily or you should die all the time. And this is dying basically to one old consciousness or frequency and then birthing yourself again to something new. So that way you become more malleable and it tends to you become more you can flow. You're not as rigid as a straight line going to your next processing station to come out and get another run at this thing and be another character in the play. You're more of looking to expand your consciousness into a full on cosmos, actually graduating to becoming an oversoul, which is the position that comes up next. And then you learn how to host realities, multiple organisms, just like a parent has to host the children, but more on a vast level to where, you know, you begin to understand how to work the let's say multi-core processor that you have right. more better because none of this stuff is like it's not. I can just say it like this. It's not as um, it's not a game in a tense to like they're just not going to let you play with it and you don't know what you're doing. 
And when I say right. they, it's more of like a collective consciousness. It, it just reads vibrations and frequencies. It's not necessarily like plotting on us and all that. It's right. just reading signatures. And that's why the professional reincarnator learns how not to emit signatures like division choices, this kind of thing. That's kind of flying right by the arconic system and how it... The snags. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so you, it just it never sees you, and so it never detects you, so you can get beyond the net. Wow, what a yeah. what a fascinating perspective I, you I have. I would love Savannah. to see that animated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's manifest that movie. Um, so, yeah, as I mentioned, I would love to have you on for a second part because yeah. I have, as you talk, I get more questions, yeah. and I had a bunch to begin with. Um, so, um, what I would like to do at this point is maybe just ask you a couple of the standard things to, uh, kind of wind this particular part one down, and then okay. we can revisit, uh, you know, part two and, uh, the uh, following week if, you know, uh, schedule permits and things like that for you and, for sure. and, uh, continue to dive into this brilliant, uh, mind of yours. So, uh.